welcome to the 2024 World Championship. Woo! It is time for the Swiss stage. We are in the Riot Games Arena in beautiful Berlin, Germany. My name is Shox, and I am so happy to join everyone welcome, here. Welcome, Shox. Thank Let's you. Go! I'm so excited. Whoa! The hope is still flying high. I don't know how long it's going to last, but I'm here with Goldberg, with <laughs> um, and with Raz. And our first game is going to start pretty, pretty soon. So we're going to get through a lot of stuff, Jack. Absolutely. I want to start with play-ins, though. And for those of you who missed it, 100 Thieves played amazingly. They were incredibly dominant. They did NA proud. It's unfortunate that they opted out of Swiss stage because they've accomplished oh, their I goals. Think that, no, that's incorrect. They got knocked out. I was told that we weren't fact-checking. <laughs> you know what? With how my teams have been doing in the last couple of years, I'll, I'll allow well, it. But we will fact-check yeah, yeah, MDK. Thank you. MDK did make it. You're right. <laughs> uh, of course, these teams from the planes will be joining our other uh, part of the crop coming out of the rest of the world. The best of the best. So even if you did get through mm -hmm. planes, you're going to have to play a little better, I think, if you want to beat these teams. They also have the patch to contend with. We have a couple of takeaways already from planes, Raz. But which teams that we're going to see for the first time you think are going to be benefited or will suck more because of the patch? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start right, with the sucking more part. part. For yeah. me, it's the sucking more. What because is this? Like, well, he's making sure they can see. The balance, yeah. team, the balance team, they have it out for the horse. Because unfortunately, not only did they sting onto uh, the, the turret plates and everything, so they made lane swapping a little bit worse, but also, a AP was an amazing AD carry mid. Like, he, his Corky, True. his Tristan, and everything. So a little nerf. A little Good nerf. point. I like how you're setting expectations low. Just a tiny bit. Yeah. Where you're sitting, actually. He's getting That's his excuses are. out of the way early. <laughs> okay, go uh, ahead, Jeff. I'm going to say, and we saw a little bit of this at play-in, but I just want to reiterate it. I think Mad Lions was actually buffed a little bit, partially from the mid lane champion pool. I think they really struggled with the AD carry meta, um, and they looked a lot more comfortable in this meta for me. So I am probably put them about here. I think they might make a little bit of noise in Swiss. Need all the help they can get. No, I like that. I mean, we were fine. play was uh, easy cruising for Mad Lions, but who else is going to be easy cruising here? I think it's going to be BLG. I think Riot, you know, they said, we hate Team Liquid, we love this team. It's about time they take a world championship. Buffing the whoa, mages whoa, in the mid. No, they are whoa, mega so buff. good already. Are, no, yeah, but they're even better now. Did you see Knight's champion pool? They're giving him an even better champion pool now. You have Bin who can play carries in the top lane. Like, it's unfair how good pa this patch is for BLG. They did so, yeah. buff Jax. They yeah. did buff Jax. They are True. one of the favorites, maybe even more so. I got some LCK teams. I got DK uh, and T1 because I feel like their mid laners will be benefit or should be benefiting oh, from like this. back to the oh, mages in the mid lane for Faker not been having the best time, Showmaker the same. So I think it's going to help them. Um, there's other lanes that, you know, we're not going to talk about them now. <laughs> but, um, I want to see Faker, you know, he's never placed below top four in any of the worlds True. he's attended, seven of them. So hopefully he gets a little bit of a, a little bit of, oh, yeah, that was, a good extra, throw. that was a decent throw. Extra fire from like the it. patch. All right, cool. So we'll see, of course, how everything develops. But I did want to take a look at what, from our fan perspective, are some of our favorite things that we're looking forward to going through the Swiss stage. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite storylines, and this is a big overarching world storyline, is just going to be China versus Korea, the yeah. LPL versus the LCK. Because I feel like last year was sneaky, almost an insane year for the LPL where they would have had world domination. They had two teams in the MSI finals. They had three fourths of the semifinals and then Faker just completely eliminated the region. Then we have Chobi who managed to win MSI. But I think if you looked at the two years holistically, the LPL has had more total teams do well, even if LCK has more titles. So I want to see if that gets evened out. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to index even closer on that. For me, it's Chovy and Knight going up against each other. I want this story. Like there's That's a million storylines of worlds. But the thing is, we've only ever seen these two play against each other. 10 times for how good they are the two best mid laners in the world right now I need to see more and I think when we come further into the tournament these are the two players that we're going to be following they want their world championship and I want to see who gets it lovely photo also Goldberg I have <laughs> thank you so it. much back to back it's the same shirt as well it's the same shirt it is the same shirt I'm looking forward to the Griffin reunion that's going to be a lot of fun there was a, an interesting quote from Tarzan saying speaking oh. um, to Lehens and Lehens saying, "Well, you're the only one who wasn't able to win, so obviously you were, you were um, the, the missing link." But Griffin was insane. They were the best team to never win anything. No, really. absolutely love the happy shocks. That's a great photo. Thank that you. looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's true. Uh, looking forward to that. We'll see how they all end up. Of course, Raz, how about yes. you? And for me, it's the fact that we've already gone through plans and we've had a lot of unique picks. So in terms of unique picks per game, it's the most of any play in uh, out Chat, the world. Chat, you need to go down again. So like, yeah, you got to talk a little bit. <laughs> so yes, you can have the caveat of the fact that there are less games. But if you look at just last year, there's less games, but also just more unique picks in general. And I think the benefit of it is, is some of the balance changes. Also, lane swapping is meant if you've had a pretty tough lane. Doesn't really matter. You can uh. really get out of it. How old is that photo? <laughs> <laughs> it was like the beginning of the year. I tricked ass that day. I really did. Oh my gosh. The next I do day have I a... shaved that thing. <laughs> It's never coming back. Um, I've got an honor honorable mention, rather, um, because Worlds is in Europe. And I was inspired by Goldberg's uh, emphatic speech that you made in Munich. But when Worlds is in Europe, things go well. In 2011, Fnatic won the World Championship. And it's, you know, it, it, it is there. It is on yeah. Wikipedia. It is on the graphics. So it happened. In 2015, two teams made it to the semifinals. We won't say what happened after that. Uh, in 2019, all teams got out of the groups. G2 made it to the finals. Now, I know what you're thinking, 2021. It wasn't supposed to be here. So I'm just going to discount that completely. Okay, that's and now we're in yeah. 2024. Yeah, a little home cooking here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Give yeah. them a slight edge. It's day one. Anyone and everyone should be allowed to dream, right? What right. happens later? Forget about that. Today's the day for cope. Today's the day of belief. Disappointment. Tomorrow also. Yeah. Exactly, but the disappointment might come later. Two days of Swiss yes. have got to be two of the best days of any world championship. We see Ever. 16 teams a day, yes. both days. It's insanity. Yes. It's crazy. Um, and some really, really fire matchups as well. But as said, we are in the Swiss stage. We saw it already last year at Worlds. And as we take a look at our bracket chat, there are some things that have stayed the same and some things that have changed. Yeah, so... A quick recap of how Swiss actually works, because if when you look at the big bracket, it looks complicated. Let's simplify it. You beat three different teams. You move on to the bracket stage. We can get to the, gra we can get to the bracket Swiss as well. Bracket. This is just the schedule for the first day. Yeah. So here's the bracket. You beat three teams. You move on. You lose to three teams. You're eliminated. And as you'll see here, some of these are best of threes. If you're ever in a best of three, it's for advancement or elimination, otherwise it's going to be best of one. And then the only change really from last year, aside from having no region on region in round one, which we've already seen via the draw, is that rematches will not happen unless it's mathematically impossible to avoid them. I love so, that. So very likely we will see no rematches throughout the entire Swiss bracket. Yep, yeah, I think that's an, uh, an awesome change. I think with that we were, I think, left wanting a little bit last year's Worlds, right? So uh, mm -hmm. with the no rematch rule, that will be just avoided. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's true. Exactly. Whatever. They can't even benefit from it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> KT rule. <laughs> uh, uh, also, remember, yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> remember to lock in your pickems. Did you lock in your pickems? I did last no, night. I forgot. Like, Ago. Yeah, literally. Oh, my ago. God. Oh, no. <laughs> Anyways, we are uh, getting into our very first match of the Swiss, Swiss stage. Two days of best ones. And it's BLG up versus MDK. And we're going to start by introducing the LEC's third seed, MDK. They did come from the plains. But we got Mirwin in the top lane. Elioya in the jungle. Frescawi in the mid lane. Then Supa and Alvaro in the bot lane, who have really impressed. And moving on to their opponents, it's BLG, the first seed coming out of the LPL and huge favorites with Bin in the top lane. Um, it'll be there in a second, but you know already Wei. Well, you may not know that because Wei actually only uh, joined as of recent and then Knight in the mid lane and then Elk and on. Maybe we won't get the graphic or maybe we'll get it later. Yeah. We'll see. And, and, and for me, if you look at the, the BLG squad, it's really an exciting to watch them because the three core of Ben, Alk, and An have been together for so damn long. It says 298 days. For no, it's me. about 600 days okay. for the three of them. Exactly. So for me, that's really enticing because they're a team that has made adjustments. They haven't made big shakeups. They've made adjustments so they can get over the hurdle. When they lost to Weibo Gaming in semifinals of Worlds, they were pissed off. Why couldn't you be? So of course they bring in uh, Knight, brought on that bit of a, a, a rocket power, and then during the summer, you talked about that addition shocks. Mm -hmm. They brought in way for the consistency and they uh, allowed them to play through top lane, mid lane a little more frequently because their entire goal is to be able to big the win, uh, win the big chip. Yeah, we've been following them uh, as for BLG for a few years now internationally and there was always that growth you could clearly see and them making the right decisions in order to be able to grow further Goldberg. And with Wei, that has definitely been evident in their play. No, he was just what they needed because they are psychopaths. They can fire on all cylinders. The problem is when you 
your jungler want to fire in all uh, cylinders as well when they were playing with Shun, you needed someone that brought in that stability, and Wei has done that. I think the meta is fantastic for him right now in terms of setting his laners up. You can play through Knight, you can play through Bin, you can play through Elk. There is all-star players all around. This roster now has just been built for one thing, and it's to win, not just the World Championship, but against Gen G specifically, who's had that number. Absolutely, and if you look at the year they've had, or even just the summer split they had, this is probably the best version of BOG we've ever seen. Yeah. Especially in terms of their dominance within the LPL. And then you look back at the last three international tournaments they've been a part of, second place at MSI, they lost in game five of the world semifinals, and then second place at MSI again. So now they're the best version of that team that was always either second or third at internationals, and they're one of the favorites of the whole tournament. Absolutely, and we've got that uh, added caveat of last year what happened, we wanna we want to make sure that doesn't happen again, even if it comes down to us to stop the LCK or stop a T1. We want to do that. It's super, super exciting. And if we talk about the jungler for BLG, we also need to talk about the jungler on the other side, El Yoya for Mad Lions, who is leading this team of rookies as a captain all the way through Worlds when nobody expected them to be here. Absolutely. This guy, I think, as someone who's not an EU caster doesn't follow exactly every game. He's so amazing for this region. He was a world quarter finalist in 2021. He's been the consistent factor for this MAD team throughout all their world's appearances. And to do what he has done and for MAD to do what they have done with four rookies and Oyoye in their very first year is incredibly impressive. And that was just to make it to the world's play-in. Their performance in play-in was downright impressive. So I think even though their first opponent it's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a chance they have a decent showing here at Worlds. And it's the journey for him. In 2021, first coming in, his first Worlds, he was the young player surrounded by veterans. And now, at this stage, when he's surrounded by rookies, we even see in content pieces, he's talking about how he sees himself and some of the younger players on his team, the, the trials and tribulations they go through throughout the year. And it's just nice to see him be the captain and lead the team. It is. And uh, Goldberg, Alvaro, was really impressive in the play-ins. And I like to see that because for people who haven't followed EU that much this year, yeah. This bot lane has been confident from the get-go. And I know some people are like, oh, they said they could be better than some players. I'm not going to name it right now. But I like that fire, that Grinta, and they showed it already here at Worlds. No, absolutely. You know, if you only watch EU in winter, you probably would have thought Alvaro is the best support. But if you then actually watch Spring and Summer, that's where they had a dip down. Mm. But the impressive part comes down to when they finally got back to play-ins, Alvaro had this series of his life. Not just against Vikings, but then again when they played against PSG. I love reading the comments in the beginning from the first series where they said Lol Esports can have all the highlights they need for Alvaro in the first series. Then the second series yeah. happened as well. The Ali Star came through, and it's the best he's been playing. Every single time things looked a little dicey, Alvaro made a play. Yeah. Absolutely. But they were also dicey, I'd say, because Mirwan and Frescali were not playing at a super high level. That needs to be better for them to succeed. That is a great point, especially versus BLG. We, we are excited about MDK getting through plans, but we got to be honest here. They are huge underdogs. Now, there was a little bit of banter back and forth. Bin said, well, Mirwan, I, I know you love playing these weird champions and some strange picks. Save them. You're going to need them when you're 0-1. So you're saying he's thinking about it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he certainly is. Now, this can come off as a bit coggy if you don't know Bin, but he's generally just the best playing in the world right now so if anyone gets to see that say this it's him on the other side of that <laughs> coin though he is saying this because he's super scared of Mewin. he's Color. like please don't bring okay. these picks out okay. no, he might no, as well no. not to oh it'd be a shame if you did Coach just save him for later because he secretly doesn't want to play against them. Yeah. he's offering free advice he's telling you just for your own good he's recognizing how good mad lions can be save it for the teams you can actually beat thank you but no thank you that's what we're saying over here we're okay. gonna bring out the range top laners Let's see. I think we're going to just lane swap. Oh, <laughs> wait, we haven't mentioned it yet. Is it just going to continue? Well, I think it will, Absolutely, especially yes. in, it, it, it will obviously depend on the draft. But if they go with an early Cassante pick, Mad was actually very good at lane swapping in the play-in phase, and you're going to want to test BLG. And also, you can deny farm from Bin, the best player on BLG. I don't see why they wouldn't. And that was the best aspect of, I thought, Mad's play in the play-ins, as you mentioned. I thought Alvaro's ability to be able to bully mid, get a flash off Kati. There were some specific plays that they actually saw. Uh, yeah. So I think actually being in the play-ins really helped them be on the stage, get kind of used to it a little bit more, and practice some of the lane swaps. So I think it actually helps them quite considerably. Yeah, we'll see indeed. Um, is there anyone you know what? You're going to predict Mad Lions. I'm just going to make it. Okay. You. What's the percent chance that they win? The You're percent, yeah, that's a good percent chance. <laughs> I know that is. Like, I know you want them to win, but how, how likely do you think it is? Well, honestly, I think it comes down to the fact that it's 
It's probably just a 50-50 because oh either you win God. or you don't win. It's true. Either you win or you don't win, and that goes for the entire World Championship. Everyone has a chance, but uh, all jokes aside, oh. we're in for a month of epicness, and the Swiss stage starts right now. That's what you get. That's what you get. I had like a dark arc, nothing but interesting. Don't spoil, don't spoil. I didn't see the trailer. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm excited for everything. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Always fun with some girls. Any fans have definitely lost hope. We are here to change that. Remember me as a big There's a winner in the mirror. You should never underestimate us. No one wants this more than us. Make so, your first finals, rookie year, how did it feel? I think the best part for me was seeing how happy my family was, especially because it took a lot of convincing for me to go pro, because we're like a traditional Arab family, so it was really nice. What about you? I um, it felt good. I felt like for the first time in a long time I could be myself. was really important to me. I just felt like it was winnable and I kept saying it until we did win. We didn't win at all, but we got pretty close. 
Chegamos, mano. A gente tá reacendendo a chama do povo brasileiro, essa esperança, tá ligado? Acho que é um sentimento único, mano. Eu <laughs> 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 People think of the final, the ending. And while it felt like a shame to lose in the final, for me, 2019 kind of just represents hope. The emotions of going on stage, my dad, my mom, my siblings, all of them supporting me. It felt like all of Europe was behind us. It shows me that we can do it once again. So are you gonna die today to make it out alive? You gotta conquer the monster in your head and then you'll fly, fly, Phoenix, fly. To be too much on some dream, question of school. To get you on board, what is your thing? So are you gonna die today? Okay, Welcome to the world's 2024 Swiss stage, MDK BLG taking the stage for our first game of eight today. 16 teams have made it to this stage for the next 10 days. Eight will be eliminated, eight will move on to the bracket stage. You saw in that wonderful video, everyone has a unique story. Everyone has a journey to get here. World-class talent across the board, and now we'll just have to see who is the best. I'm Dracos, joined by Vedias for the first four matches of the day. And I mean, they're all bangers, each and every single one of them. It's a clash of ambition. Dreams are on the line. And for all of these pro players, this is what they've ultimately been working towards. It's Worlds 2024, it's the Swiss stage, and we're starting off with a David versus Goliath. The titans <laughs> of BLG will be going up against the underdogs of MDK, a roster that is consistently underestimated versus a roster whose expectations are at their highest. It's so crazy when you look at the difference in how people talk about these teams. MDK, they're like, oh, shaky all year. When people talk about BLG and they're critical, it's critical in that way that a team that is so clearly the best, it's the nitpicky, it's the little oh, things. Yeah. Oh, they're not quite good enough at this. They're not quite good enough at that. It's always through the lens of, will they win it all? Whereas MDK, it's, can they even make it to the next stage? So for them to have the potential to go toe to toe with BLG, see what they can get done in this matchup, but certainly expectations are stacked against them. It was super fun last night watching some champion skew games, seeing Knight and Bin going up against each other. Knight getting a cheeky solo kill up against Bin. It was clear that they were having a lot of fun last night. And I'm excited to see what they bring out today because the meta, I feel like that it's in BLG's favor. We're getting the return of Syndra, but we get to see Knight back on one of his most successful picks of all time. As we're getting ready for the draft, let's see what the priorities will be. What is the respect going to be shown towards MDK? Is there something that they are concerned about? Nidalee already taken away from Eldoria and Mirwin. Yeah, respect ban already paid over Ziggs, also going to be taken away. 
Still strong on the current patch, despite some nerfs to his passive, that overall damage to towers, Jinx taken two. And of course, it's important to remember, MDK have already kind of shown us a little bit of their read on what the meta is on 14-18, but for so many of the teams today, the vast majority, 12 of them uh, exactly, didn't play for plants, right? Now we need to see how they feel about it, what they have been scrimming, what they have been practicing. So there is potential to really see the meta shaken up as much as some things feel pretty stable, like more or less the mid lane pool. Now Skana, Orianna, Syndra, so many power picks are available. But BLG, they're going to lock in the Vi. They want the lockdown potential. Could this potentially be an Ari Vi, a Syndra Vi? I mean, Knight has so many champions <laughs> that he can play in combination with this setup. Wei, a very versatile jungler. So much of the conversation has been about his introduction to BLG and how he's made them more of a complete team. Now, bringing out the Vi, obviously a far cry from what we saw from the playoffs and the regular season due to the meta shift. How will MDK respond with the Skana locked in? You imagine that's going to go towards El Yoya. We've typically seen them prioritize that early AD carry to getting the Cassandra and then looking for those early lane swaps, but that's not going to be an option for them today as the Syndra is taken away from Knight. And while Syndra certainly is a powerful pick in the context of the meta, uh, a champion who is very vulnerable, when she doesn't have flash, when she doesn't have scatter, which has an incredibly long cooldown, a champion like Vi level 6 makes it pretty easy to find kills and to focus around that mid lane. Find Gnar. Gnar are going to grab here. Mirwen, I believe, was spamming Gnar and solo queue less. One of the first times in history I've looked at Mirwen's solo queue page and it hasn't been full of random cheese picks, clearly giving some respect to uh, practicing the more conventional safe there options. But there's the RE buy, and I'm going to be honest, if we take nameplates off, I'm like, Frescali might be okay. But when we turn those nameplates on, Betty, I'm shaking. I mean, Knight's streak was broken recently, but that shouldn't take away from the fact that this man has an incredible 86% win rate on the champion, all time across his career. It is an exceptional pick for him, and it's something that, I mean, you don't have to look very far back. He was drawing target bans consistently due to the power of this champion. So it's exciting to see it here in the debut at Worlds. The response is going to be the Cassante. We already talked about it. MDK have been leaning towards this style. They're going towards the, the safe top side of the map, suggesting that they are looking towards a lane swap here in the first game of the Swiss stage. Potentially, and perhaps why we see the Jinx taken away early on in the draft from BLG. Don't want to give them the strongest AD carry in a lane swap scenario, but a very strong top side in terms of tanky life bars, but maybe some difficult matchups. We'll have to see how Frescali manages the RE matchup early on. Of course, post level six is really where it's going to get difficult for the center, but early on it should be harass and now you're seeing 80 carry bans a lot of utility in the bot lane right now as some of the more premier options have been hit Varus, ash taken away or sorry not Varus, excuse me ash and Jin taken away see if Varus shows up has been popular in solo queue but of course uh, we were talking about earlier today lucian nami also on the rise and it'll be banned as well well i mean the 80 carry pool has been narrowed pretty significantly um <laughs> you're looking at things maybe like Callista, misfortune um Kaisa as a possibility. We've seen a little bit of Zaya as well with the Poppy now banned. I like that Poppy ban. It makes a lot of sense. You're looking at now Rel being a high value champion. I wonder if MDK is looking for it. Are we going to... Ooh, I mean, <laughs> shouldn't talk about the hovers. Okay. Well, I mean, Tristana, another champion that's great in the lane swaps thanks to her ability to siege. So you imagine this is going to go in the hands of Super, unless they're giving us an old school G2 where they put the Sintra in the bot lane, but that's not what I'm expecting. <laughs> Nor am I. Although it would be interesting, of course, Tristana, uh, you know, I think hit even on the playoffs patch that most regions played on, but a champion that we saw in plans not be nearly as effective, at least in the context of mid lane. So we'll see if bot lane looks better for her and where she's going to end up right now, though, on taking his time debating. On, of course, for Alvaro, you know, so many supports in the LEC, in EMEA, talk about On as this guy who is so creative, who is someone that they look up to. And now I'm curious to see what Alvaro is going to bring to the table because Rel in a vacuum, still one of the absolute strongest support picks overall, just provides so much. Even her early laning phase is solid. So what is Alvaro planning to mitigate what On can do? It's going to be the Alistair. That's fair. It's fair. It's not my favorite pick. You I can mean, see he did have a good early. performance on it in the planes, though. So, I mean, he's playing with confidence. Um, but yeah, this draft from MDK, it's pretty traditional, front to back, very stock standard. The thing is with BLG though, they're going for a heavy dive comp. When we think about how they team fight, I mean, they're one of the best team fighting teams in the world. Their target selection is often immaculate. And the problem you're gonna have is for a scow, he's gonna find it difficult to survive with all this threat diving on top of him. All five champions of BLG want to get into your face. They wanna close that gap and they wanna look to fight.
Now we're expecting that lane top in the early levels and the execution from MDK has been clean from what we've seen so far from them in the play-ins. But of course, the level of competition has escalated somewhat. <laughs> yeah, somewhat, sure, yes, as, yes. Uh, as, some would say significantly, but yes. As the third seed from the LEC will take on the first seed from the LPL. We're getting ready for our first game of the Swiss stage here at Worlds 2024. Two teams, MDK, no strangers to the stage, had the time in plans. BLG the first time. We'll get to see what they can bring to the table. I'm Obviously. excited, Dracos. <laughs> honestly, I just have, this is such an interesting switch because if you told me that what BLG drafted was exactly what, how MDK wanted to play the game, yeah, I think you'd be spot on. Early game, you got picks in the mid game. It suits them so well. MDK kind of stepping out of what was their comfort zone domestically, at least, to be more about scaling, to be less about necessarily finding these early skirmishes and see if it will indeed be the lane swap. As we get into this first game of the day, remember, win three, you are through to the bracket stage, lose three, and you are out. Yeah, highlighted it so beautifully earlier. Of course, any elimination or qualification games will be best of three. Otherwise, quick couple of best of ones. Okay, let's look at this early setup. So far, a lot of pings coming down. Information trying to be garnered from both sides. You can see MDK, MDK's bot lane already hovering around the top side jungle. They need to keep track of any potential wards being invested from either side. On already getting aggressive onto Alvaro. We'll just try to walk him down. Proccing the plasma would be decent. Gonna force him to base, likely, as Knight also took a bit of damage for Skawi. Gonna Mount flash out. Flash forward. Charm start coming in from Knight, forcing the flash out from Frescal. We're gonna force the back and likely the TP as well. Devastating for MDK at level one. And they've still got the Tristan on the top side of the map. This is a really difficult position to start a lane swap from, especially because they're on vision. Sweet, we're gonna come through. Are they looking to invade this? I think that'd be very ambitious. At the very least, they're going to try and interrupt. But look, the cross map is happening. You can see the way he's already moved to the bottom side of MDK's jungle. The map is going to be split. Another charm landing. Alvaro's here, still has his flash, is forced out. We're not even, <laughs> the lane phase is just starting. Well, I mean, so traditionally what you'll do is you'll put your supports into the mid lane, then you'll have your AD carries lane with the top laners. So then once the top laners get that XP along with the AD carries, um, then they can TP towards the stacked wave on the top side, as you can see uh, that MDK is doing. The adaptation that BLG is saying is that we put up top and mid uh, in mid lane, and that means that we can just fight you. What's an Alistair gonna do at level one against us? They've got the traditional bot lane set up on the bottom side of the map. This does mean though, that if Bin does TP towards the top side, his support is gonna be extremely far away from him, and he's gonna be at risk of a dive. But it is a clever adaptation because so often in lane swaps where both teams know it's coming, you don't have a Gnar who's very vulnerable to those early dives. We saw it at MSI as well with things like the Twisted Fate, like the Vayne. You just run into mid lane sometimes, harass a bit level one, try to build a greater advantage his way in Alvaro. Trading blows here and, now, this crucially, Alvaro's not level two, which <laughs> is... Crucially, Alvaro's by himself against four people. And he doesn't have flash. Oh, I mean, things are falling apart here for Mad Lions. Koi in the in the setup, the TP's gonna come through. BLG's still gonna commit to the dive. This still seems pretty favorable. That level one Alistair's gonna have to get a lot of work done. Q finally gonna come out immediately. He goes down. Mirwin here to try to at least catch some of this XP. First blood is there, but level three for Mirwin is big. That much harder to dive. As long as he has W up, it's really difficult for BLG to pull the trigger. The Pathmaker crucial, dashing through. Ball breaker coming in. Flashback from Mirwin. The plasma stacks are already there, just trying to get XP again. If he has to give his life, it's crucial that he gets the wave. At the very least, W win. Trying to get the Q3 back. Gets one. Mirwin standing. Gets two. BLG cooking a bit too much on the bottom side. Side. They had the beef, they wanted the second course, but it was too damn greedy. I was about to talk about how well BLG's target management was of the tower. They were managing the aggro so well, but then Mewin finds the outplay. He gets himself two kills, and he's able to salvage what was a devastating start. And it's the same in play-ins. The first time MDK pulled out this lane swap, it was Mewin turning around a dive that made it look so good. That tower shot onto Elk was crucial. Now, Wade doesn't end up taking tower aggro here. It's on, but he's trying to help his jungler get away to safety. The flash comes through from Bin as well to avoid the knockback, and Mewin walks away with a double kill. And crucially, he's there for all that XP. Doesn't even matter if Look, he gets the smirk, farm. A small smirk, he can't be <laughs> overconfident. He knows, hey guys, I pulled this off, but it's, it's a big road to 
to climb. Getting an early lead is one thing, but we've seen MDK find these early leads before and not be able to close out. And we're only four minutes in, so to call this a lead, I think would be generous. You can tell it's day one of Worlds because the second anything happens, we're like, that's the best play I've seen in the world, <laughs> which is technically true in Swiss stage, but we can take a breath. Remember that as much as, obviously, Mirwin is ahead individually, didn't get too much CS. The kills only giving him a small edge over the NAR, likely still expected to fall behind here, but we have started to return at least to standard lanes. And the gold, not that significant in the favor of MDK as Frescawi falling behind in these trades, trying to burn through that mana bar, just get the wave crashed in, calling an Yoya to support him. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Frescawi had the best play-ins when we look at the entire man roster. I mean, going up a player like Knight, this is a matchup that typically favors Syndra, but Knight is just so experienced in this matchup specifically that you can see how he's able to find these nice trades and he's able to get a nice health advantage. And the fact that Frescawi doesn't have flash, he's going to be forced to go back to base. Now, Knight can look for a quick push, knowing that there's no TP available for Frescawi. Boots are going to come in from him as he makes his way back to lane as quickly as possible, but he is going to lose some farm. He may even lose most of the wave here as the Dragon now being started by BLG. I respect the call here from BLG. Obviously around the mid game, you can favor a lot of their options to try to snowball a bigger lead, but by denying Drake's early, they eliminate the late game threat, at least somewhat from MDK. Headbutt pull kicks things off. Elk, Ignite down, Satchel Charge stacking up. Elyoya waiting in the brush, on getting aggressive, but Alvaro's getting lower and lower. The Ignite still ticking, knock back into the wall, coming in from Elyoya, the Drake already down. Now they know that Wei is on the bottom side. Shouldn't be too much more here other than pushing in the wave to crash. They do get the Ignite out of on, but nothing else really. Just a bit of pressure put down to allow for the MDK bot lane to go back safely. Now for Scowy in a lot of danger. Very much. One more dash coming in for Knight. But they already get the flash. TP not quite available for Frescawi as well. That's devastating. And this is kind of the fear when you go against this combo Vi and the Ari together. It's just so easy to get that set up. He really wants to stick around though so he can get the level six. He can't really afford to lose much more farm. You can already see that discrepancy starting to be built up in mids. But with that control, Wei is going to move from Dragon straight to the Grubs. Aldoya, he's going to be a little late to the party and with no mid control, it's going to be a very difficult contest. Getting in, getting involved. Knight, of course, does not have ultimate because of the previous play. Way, I think a bit of a greedy call. Already got the Drake, wanted to go for more based on the mid lane trade, but MDK are here in time. They know the Knight does not have ultimate. They're trying to get a little bit more out of him. The stun connecting from the Alistair. Oh, you're trying to follow up. Elk is here as well. Mir went. Now they're dogpiling in, trying to get one, but they've already lost Alvaro in the process. Way getting pulled away. Super gonna get the reset. Will he jump again? 3v4 stacked against MDK. Mir went Q3 ready to go. All out, slowly ticking down. Only a few more seconds where he's gonna be able to do damage. Flash with the wall coming in from Knight. Mir went still continuing to step forward. Oh, taken out as well. MDK find the advantage in the skirmish. BLG were first to get all five around the grubs and they were ready for a fight. But again, it's Mirwin. Mirwin with great play forces a flash out from Elk. Knight is forced to flash. He gets himself a kill as well. He finds himself 3-0 on one right now with a full level advantage over Bin on the top side. Mirwin, the star for MDK so far in this game. Which in the context of everything that we have seen from him, both in plans and this year, it's not what you... Mirwin Cassante is not the champion that you think of as Super. Gets a bit aggressive, Ooh. damage down onto Elk. He has the jump reset available. Vi is hovering around the top side of the map as the blue is being cleared. Pings are coming down onto On as well. Alvaro needs to get some vision as Elioia makes his way up to secure the Scuttle Crab. But it's a tense affair as MDK performing better than expected here in the early game. Super now in a bit of danger. Has to be careful, proactively rocket jumping out, doesn't want to risk trying to go for the buffer with so much CC present on the rail. Alvaro still only level three, a little bit awkward. Not gonna hurt too much, however, as Elioia grabs the Scuttle Crab, taking a look at the gold, still very close. Only two grubs picked up by MDK for the threshold that both teams are gonna be looking for in the next spawn in about three minutes. So for now, a bit of calm across the map as Knight and Prescow is still continuing to trade, but the trade's still very much favoring Knight. Always a joy to watch Knight play this Ari. Right. We already talked about how it is one of his all-time favorites, one of his most impressive champions, and he continues to do a good job in the mid lane. We turn our attention towards the next objective, of course, still two minutes away, so both teams looking to try and farm up, get as close as they can to that first core item, wanting to secure level sixes for a number of players. Yeah. Both on and Alvaro, very starved of XP as a result of the lane swap. Way though sets his sights on mid. Rescawi. Gonna be in trouble here, tries to get the knockback on a night, goes completely wide, easy dive for BLG. Point click CC from Vi is just so damn powerful. Just very well executed as well. They'd already gotten Frescawi's flash earlier. Remember that they got it on the level one. They weren't able to punish it the first time around, but this time they make it look clean. Knight now will secure the level eight. And 
as well get his first kill of the game. So very well done from BLG's mid jungle there. El Yoya sets his sights on the top side. Elk, no sums, but does have ulti. If they can mark up El Yoya, perhaps a way for him to escape. Backing away now, bit of additional movement speed, zoning away the flash, the ultimate. On locked up, and Elk manages to escape using the ultimate support taken out. MDK, free access now to the plates on the top side. Rascal is struggling in mid, but El Yoya making a smart choice. I'm just going to play towards where I know we have a strength. Super's getting great trades onto Elk. They have a stacked wave. They're going to deny a lot of farm. Now, Mewin is the one that has to be careful. Bin, even though he's behind in experience, knows the limitations of his champion, is getting good trades, and they're also securing plates on the bot side of the map. He has a CS advantage. Securing those plates is going to help close the gold gap between him and the top side of the map. And this is the thing about BLG. Sure, they may have lost a few early skirmishes. They might be getting picked off here and there. And while MDK have the kill lead, you can't ever afford to underestimate BLG. They're so good at moving around the map, looking for opportunities to punish their opponents. But so far, both teams being proactive on the sidelines. Yeah, pretty even trades. MDK, small gold advantage. A lot of that because the kills they've been able to amass, but still plates going in the favor of BLG. 20 seconds. Mount Drake. Always a bit nerve-wracking for MDK if they do not have good vision control to walk into any of these objectives. The threat of Knight and Way together alone is so much, but obviously once you add anyone else to the mix, it gets more and more chaotic. El Yoyo, the only person on the map to complete an item thus far, will help him out a little bit, at least when he has ultimate available. Zeke's uh, very cheap early purchase, but way getting set up around the Drake in the form of the Scuttle Crab, starting to clear out some of his vision is the rest of BLG at least keeping an eye on the potential grub spawn. I mean, it looks like MDK on intro. Did you just. Was okay, he, he thought he had X Flash and he just flashed. I'm pretty confident that's what just that happened. <laughs> I looked away for a second. Was that real flash? Yeah, that, that was that. He, I'm convinced Alvaro thought that he had hex flash, and then he just flashes into the rift. <laughs> um, yeah, a bit of an oopsie. But that's that, all right. That's, just, that's a weird bug with a 10-minute flash cool there, guys. I don't know how to. MDK fans, don't worry about that one. Uh, a little concerning, but uh, but it's know. all right. Grubs for uh, Dragon Spawn, but Waze killed that dragon pretty quick. Now BLG, they want to contest this objective. Rescarry over the wall has to be careful. Will be spotted now on fog. One Grub taken down again. Four is what matters here. On going in, no level six for Alvaro is big. Knight has the ulti. The reset's coming in. El Yoya masks to kick things off. Rescue now needs to finish the kill, but Knight already dashing out of safety. They're chasing down Elk as well. They just need to get these kills down. One taken out. 80 carry off the board. Knight running. Grubs going to the side of MDK again. BLG are in position to contest, but MDK are just getting more in the fight. The fact that they targeted Alvaro at the start of that was very smart, because as you highlighted, Dracos, no ultimate available on this Alistair means that this Alistair is very squishy, so they're able to eliminate him, but they did invest a decent amount of resources, and with a nice counterplay from El Yoy to find that two-man ultimate, we saw a bit of a misplay, a bit of a scary moment from Friscari, because he doesn't use the ultimate immediately, so he has to flash over the wall before he can actually commit to that play, as Bin bounces in. No mana on for a Scowy. Alvaro knows that he can't really afford to make any gambles here, but he really needs some XP. Is on, ticks over to six. Alvaro is still a ways away from that level up. Differences in the smallest margins, of course. Just a little bit of XP here, giving on that level six, allowing them to start the fight. Credit really to Elioya and Mirwin for, for just getting in there. Chris Gowie has so much CC from his allies, it allows him to connect a lot of those easy skill shots, the Dark Sphere, into his Cat of the Week. And now, uh, doing pretty well on the stacks approaching the second ability upgrade. And notice now that the gold shift has gone over towards Bin. He's been farming well, he's been picking up plates, and even though Mirwin finds himself with three kills, Bin's just been doing a good job around the map and has just been pressuring the 1v1 out very well that he's been able to get back that gold deficit that he was in. And he finds himself in a comfortable spot. The big advantage we really see is for Super, who's getting closer to that Infinity Edge. Just a bit of a fight in mid. Good on Supa to trade back onto on at least. Now the ulti's coming in, interrupting a dash out from Knight. Alvaro also putting him out as well. Knight's got no more charges left, but if they find a kill, he'll get one back. Knight now killing Alvaro, finding that angle. One more reset to go in. El Yoya admits the entire team. Z Convergence doing a little bit of work. Elk trying to finish the kills, but Supa's still alive for now. El Yoya tanky, but not tanky enough. And no! It's coming in! Lightning! Static finishing the kill. Double now for Elk. That is soul crushing for the side of MDK. A delicate fight, well fought by BLG. They dance around around the MDK players, leveraging their mobility to the fullest, and they're able to find three kills. Four even, after they started that pick onto Alvaro. Very well played from them. They get a bunch of plates into mid. They set their sights on the Rift Herald. We look back at this fight again. No level six for Alvaro. Just a bit of chip 
damage, traded back and forth, but then Wei sees his target. Nice stun from Friscawi on tonight to keep him at distance, but then they lock down Alvaro. The jump is invested from Super. He can't quite get that kill onto Wei. And then as the flash comes in from Elka, situation that should have been very scary, Knight's positioning makes it hard for Friscawi to approach. And then the last bit of damage comes down to secure that kill onto Super. And Frescawi can't do anything to turn the fight around. That's so frustrating for Super. If he's just a little bit further back, the static proc from killing Elioya doesn't hit him. But oh boy, it did. Decent chunk of damage to get the job done. We take a look at the MasterCard lane economy snapshot. And it's all pointing to, to BLG right now after a fight like that. They're going to grab the Herald too, of course. Grub buff in favor of MDK. They can the pressure on the side lane here. But overall, really turning around what little advantage MDK had with that massive play in the mid lane. Cross map is going to come through as BLG send Knight over towards the top lane and Wei is securing the Herald. Elk is going to be pushing in mid, close to securing that tower. Super knock back into the tower! A bit of a misplay there from Elk. He ults behind Super, which allows Super to knock him into the tower. Getting that extra turret shot allows him to find a kill. A small moment of reprieve for Super after securing that Infinity Edge. Is tower going to be traded now on the top side of the map? Level 11 for Knight. This Ari it only continues to get stronger. And this is such a terrifying position to be in if you're MDK. Yes, the gold is close, the itemization not too different between the teams overall, but their team is built to make picks. They're so good at finding these creative angles as a team. You highlighted it in the draft. Their target selection is so good as well. And you can see for MDK in these team fights, BLG so much more comfortable weaving in and out of the fight, playing on the edge, finding these small advantages. And MDK, not only are they going to struggle in terms of gold deficit, but their composition not quite as quick to collapse on those opportunities. I mean, BLG are also just good at setting up their sideways. Look, they've got Knight catching top wave. He has the TP available. Bin is constantly pressuring in on this bot wave, specifically chipping away at that tower. Frescawi just doesn't feel safe, even though he has vision coverage around the bot side of the map. It's BLG that's just constantly pressuring the map. And then when they do group, MDK feel forced to oblige, so they're then losing farm on the sidelines. And you can see how this is starting to showcase in the, in the CS discrepancies. Mirwin's down 40 CS, mid lane is down 30 CS. PLG is ultimately just playing map. Now they drop the Herald. This gives them control over mid as MDK set their sights on trying to pick Bin in the bot lane. Bin picking up a Cinder. Trying to speed his way out at least by a bit more time. But with Herald down, they really have to get something done here for the side of MDK. Bin about to turn Mega. Gets the double hop out before he goes. Not even going to get connected on by the Q3 from Mirwin. Just Look walking away, buying so much time. Bit of a sunken cost fallacy here for the side of MDK. They've given everything to kill Bin. They will at least try to get that. But On is now here as well. Bin will finally fall. But BLG get two towers in the mid lane. The cost of that is, as you rightly said, two big objectives in the mid lane. The top wave is going to be pushed in. Completely uncontested. Knight now ticks over to level 12. He can start chipping away on this tower, but the TP flank is likely going to be his priority, and there it is. TP behind. Uh, yeah, spots Knight coming, but it's going to be difficult to lock that Ari down. Knight already level 12. Alvaro level 6. Comes out a little bit late. The unbreakable will. Alvaro but... is starved of so much experience. Frescawi. Frescawi. Just dead. Could have taken an extra second here. Tries to get tricky with it, but Knight and Wait. We, I mean, we talked about it in draft, right? This is a terrifying mid jungle duo. It... It worked out exactly as expected. It is so difficult now for MDK to play the map. BLG collapsing for their third Drake. And while, yes, MDK are staying even in the kill department, everything else is going in favor of BLG. Yeah, you have to recognize what just happened on the map. Bin drew four people, ultimately, to the bot side of the map. That allowed BLG to pressure top, pressure mid, where they secured two towers. And then because the top wave was pushed in, Knight could then TP in to create a four versus five. And even though they're down numbers, so many resources were invested to even try and kill Bin that not only did BLG find a pick onto an overextended for Scowie, they then converted into the Dragon as well. They literally got everything at the cost of Bin's life. And that's credit to Bin, really, for surviving as long as he did, because very often, high-level League of Legends, it's trade for trade. Hopefully, you're trading up in these circumstances. But Bin just basically made that the worst trade deal ever for MDK by taking so much time, by ensuring that there were more follow-up plays. And now, MDK incredibly far behind. Yes, it is only a 3k deficit, but Soul Point is right around the corner. If they don't have setup on that Drake, it's easy pickings for the side of BLG. Yeah, I mean, it, BLG are just doing a really good job of managing their side lanes. Like, you can see it in terms of the itemization that both carries for BLG and Knight and Elk uh, have secured their second. And now they set their sights on the top tier too. They're just meticulously tearing apart what control MDK have. And even though there's deep vision on the side of MDK, their own jungle is very dark and full of terrors. Yeah. 
and beautifully highlighted by our observers just to show how little MDKC right now. And they're fine just letting this Syndra push in bot lane. They don't care. They're really not worried about it. They're happy to play the 4-1. Mio and doing what he can to clear out the wave, but it's not going to be enough as this tower gets lower and lower. Ryan stepping up just to harass. Of course, if a charm does connect, very likely to be a kill. Mirwin and Elioia probably the only ones tanking enough to survive that initial burst. But now returning to topside, and MDK kind of forced to play wherever BLG decide to apply pressure. And again, they find the pick. MDK, bit of sleight of hand there, paying all that attention to the top side of the map. With a sloppy rotation there from Prescow. He thought he could wander through, thought they saw enough people that he was safe to take a riskier path to topside, but he was not. I mean, it's crazy to me that that's even the risky path, right? <laughs> I mean, this is the thing that the pressure that BLG put down, but it's exactly what their comp wants to do. Find these picks. We've talked so much about it. They have so much lockdown. Vi and Ari as a mid-jungle duo is so lethal if you're caught out of position. And I mean, what was Super even allowed to do? It was just a, a difficult situation. Sorry, for Sky, what was he even allowed to do in that situation is that uh, BLG find themselves another pick. They find themselves another tower. And you can see now how much control BLG have over the entire map. Yeah, and the win probability powered by AWS is uh, looking a little one-sided, unsurprisingly. Of course, there are situations where, you know, a 4K gold lead doesn't feel insurmountable. It is two fully completed items for both 80 carries in this context. Third, of course, much closer to completion on the side of Elk. But those are the big breakpoints, the full completed items. That said, BLG with so much more control, Supa at least getting a bit of harass here down onto on. But overall, the angles of attack here for MDK becoming more and more limited. Mirwin at least has a bit of a flank, will be spotted on that control ward. Crucially, BLG, do they want to go for the collapse here? Instant charm. Mirwin probably has to ult out to safety, but the layering of CC is flawless from BLG. Good vision coverage just prevents Mirwin from finding the flank that he's looking for. Doesn't even get an opportunity to use the flash or the ultimate. Now the Baron is started off by BLG. They'll either use this to turn and fight, or they'll just take the objective MDK is being pressured on both sides of the map. The bot tier two is falling. The Baron is getting low. Elioia looking for a steal. See Elioia though. He'll have to flash to the pit if he wants to get this TP now coming in as they already got the side lane tier two. Baron going to fall in favor of BLG. MDK now starting a fight at a man disadvantage. This is going to be disastrous. Been finding one with a quick angle off the side. Prescowie trying to get down as much damage as he possibly can, but the carries are getting deleted. Supa down. Prescowie down. All Elioia and Alvaro can do is run. BLG just absolutely dominating. It comes back to the target selection for Skawi and Super. The only real damage dealers on the side of MDK immediately locked down, focused up, and destroyed. BLG win another one-sided team fight with the Baron to boot. Keep your eyes on this. Knight just kind of chipping away at the health bars. The ultimate comes down to Friskawi. Elk goes for the 1v1 against Super, and the ultimate I mean, Frescawi tries to throw it down onto Wei. He basically takes no damage, at the very least trying to get something back. But Knight sidestepping and navigating his way around the stun means that he's able to get that kill. Super is shut down. And uh, BLG, they dominate the fight. Certainly do. And those situations are you kind of where you know you're getting outclassed a little bit. When the Gnar is splitting, takes a tower, and then in leisurely time shows up to fight with a man advantage, the game is not going well for you. And I think for MDK, Given the tools that they have, yes, if they can stall, then get more items on Supa, things might get a little bit easier. But there's a Kaisa, Ari, Vi, and if any piece of CC hits Supa, it is so hard for them to peel for their AD carry. The, the most impressive thing to me about this game is it felt like the BLG just had no wasted movements, you know? Every time they reset back out onto the map, they were doing something productive, and they were getting small advantages every single time. And it was just such a macro difference between them as they now set their sights for another fight. Finn, knockback, super nice buffer to make it out to safety, way off to the side. Mirwan taking a lot of that initial damage. Alti now coming in from the buy. Frescali getting lower and lower, just trying to 1v1 Ben, but not doing a whole hell of a lot. Ben's still standing. Alti there for Frescali, but Ben is still alive! He just keeps hitting! He's walking away! That tiny Yordle adding insult to injury as BLG again just wiped the fight. MDK looking for these angles of attack. Last desperate moves, but the flash charm coming in from Knight is enough. The ace there for BLG, and it feels like they might just end it here. It's complete domination. A five for zero clean ace from BLG. 23 and a half minutes in. They absolutely decimate MDK, and they have a statement performance here. Game one in the Swiss Stage of Worlds 2024. That's a that's a Magi's. He bought that Magi's his third item, and it already has 23 <laughs> stacks. It's, it, 
Knight yeah. is very fed. Everyone is very fed. I mean, there's a reason a lot of people respect his Ari. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we look back at this fight, right? And it's uh, Bin initiates the play. It's already a lost fight because Super's disengaging. So now they've lost all their damage. Now MBK is already forced to retreat. BOG set their sights onto Mirwin to get rid of the front line. For a scout, he TPs in and basically gets soloed out by Bin, who's followed up with Knight. And they had the damage combined to be able to secure that kill. And then it's just a matter of cleanup for BLG. They don't lose a single member. Bin is protected. The Starak's doing work. And yeah, it's a difficult one for El Yoya, as he knows how, uh, how challenging this game has been. They had a promising start. A few fumbles from BLG allowed yeah. for MDK to find good advantages. Super getting picks, Mirwin having a strong lead, but once BLG got out into the side lanes, they just, they've been unstoppable. Certainly, and I think this is one of the things about the best teams in the world and the potential tournament favorites, a team like BLG that makes them so terrifying is sometimes people look at League of Legends as this turn-based game, but when you're playing as a team at the caliber of BLG, they're always on the next move. It feels like you never have a chance to breathe. You always oh, yeah. need to be planning one or two steps ahead. And if you can't keep up with that pace of game, you're rapidly going to fall behind. Mirwin grouping so much, finding kills, but it was Bin farming on a side lane, always trading up just that tiny bit. And eventually the early lead that MDK found just did not mean anything. Now PLG set their sights on the Nexus. They've got the soul. Friskari trying to find a stun. Maybe he can convert it into something. But the pressure is continuing them out. They don't have that top wave. Been going to try and unlock the super minions. They do have the bot one, though. And that tower is going to fall very quickly. Pretty effortless for BLG to play on three lanes right now. MDK have to commit so much just to get close. Scatter the weak, really their only long range, uh, you know, engage tool other than a headbutt pulverized from Alvaro, but if Alvaro goes in, they have to win that fight or it's over. Ben continues to harass. Slow, controlled finish coming in from BLG, just taking their time, knowing they don't really need to force anything. Yeah, they, they're still showing respect. You know, they know that there's a world where they could throw. I mean, it would have to be quite egregious, but even so, they're leveraging the, the pick tool or the poke tools they have with the W coming out from the Kai'Sa, the charms, and. Q's coming Alvaro out. Oh, starting go. Knight locked up again. Can they just delete this Ori? But no, the interrupt is clean from on, and Knight manages to make it out for a brief moment. Now Miron going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Elk on the backside of the fight. Kazante not strong enough. Supa back in the found Ignite ticking, finally starting the heal. But four members still stand on BLG, and that is gonna do it. Supa, not enough damage, not enough left in the tank. BLG getting first blood here in the world's 2024 Swiss stage. A final fight, but it will not matter. MDK is able to round out the game by the very least putting a blemish on the KDA of Knight, reducing it from infinity to 18. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a big drop when you think about it. Take Taking some of those stacks away as well. Obviously an incredible game one. We're gonna send things over to the analyst desk immediately so they can talk more about what took place. We're so excited to do oh. so, especially oh, me. Um, wow, okay. <laughs> Clear Whoa. MDK, um, a bit out of their depth versus BLG. So, BLG looked great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and a couple things I learned. They are so good at turning it on. Yes. Because for the first five minutes, this game was looking actually pretty scary for them. And then the second thing I'll learn is that MDK should actually just keep lane swapping. They had a big lead from the lane swapping, they did. but then they just out the, Yeah, your you know, mid laner does have them. to stay mid. Uh, and that was kind of the issue. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Reg, you wanted something on the lane swaps. I just learned the importance of how uh, the level six on an Alistar, you know? At some uh, point, you're going to need some experience and too many back-to-back -back fights where he was the target and he really couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, we're setting up for the interview, but I think some takeaways can all also be mm. night, on Ari, I mean, you know what's gonna happen. We, we did as well. You and I we were just sat here. That's an Ari. Now we saw Vi <laughs> first pick. We see a Syndra, and yeah. I think I was a bit disappointed in the way that MDK answered a first pick Vi because by going Ari, you're just hmm. putting Fresco in a bad position. He's never gonna have a good time. The two v two with level six from Ascana and Syndra is not gonna give you that mid prio. So they had to get ahead from the early game, and and they did to a certain degree. But I think that level one where everyone's just burning their summoners, and then obviously mid game from BLG where they just take over, yeah. it became really unplayable at a certain point in the game. The draft will be a big topic. Oh and speaking of big, yes. speaking of big, big numbers, <laughs> big numbers, big wins, yeah. small losses, <laughs> small losses. But that glass bleed is winnable. Yes, it, it, <laughs> it's, it's insane. The glass is half full, I like it. Because they went for the vine, completely said, Skarner OP, Syndra OP, we don't care, we're getting the boy, the Ari, and we're supporting it with the Vi, and we're bullying yeah. side lanes. They performed off of it, but I don't think this is going to be the standard going forward. I think they've just 
wanted comfort. Yeah. I think that's the big takeaway for me here in terms of BOD's drafting. They just bullied the draft. They just said the things that they wanted to play, played them, and smashed. They did, and Laura's now standing by with Vin in the Verizon post-game interview. And welcome back to the stage for the very first We Stage interview with Ben. Thank you so much for joining me. Congrats on taking the first one. Before taking on Mad Lions, you said, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's be careful against this team. So what was your understanding of Mad Lions? And also, can you explain the first 10 minutes of the game? 首先恭喜你们在瑞士轮取得了自己的开门红就是这局的话其实前面也是跟我们想的一样吧但是我们月下的时候出现了一些失误吧所以变成了反杀的前期很艰难稍微有点温度有点上来了 so, to be honest, before the, this game, we have already made this kind of prediction. Yeah, my Lancer definitely have some lane swap inside the game. And also, it feels like they also have the drafted that we have already predicted. But maybe the issue happened around the ball lane tower dive because we played so messy around there. So it's kind of put ourselves in a disadvantage. So it's kind of like warm you a bit up. <laughs> well, still an amazing read on them and great recovery on that game, Bin. One thing that is always short, with you is the confidence that you have coming into the international stage. You keep on saying that you're, best, you're the best top laner in the world, but I want you to give me specifics as what makes you the best top laner in the world. How makes you stand out? 其实我们很多时候想到兵哥第一个我们想到的词语就是你的自信心很多时候你都会说来到这种世界大赛的舞台你想成为你会是最强的上单所以也想问一下你觉得是有哪些来自自己的特质能够让自己在众多上单之中